I have some of the robes here with me. This is my first time seeing these up close. This belongs belong to an imperial wizard, which means national leader. But uh, I tried it on to see what, see what it felt like, what it looked like. You put the KKK robe on. I put the clan robe on and the hood, you know, to see if I felt powerful. I want to see if it had that kind of effect. So I went and stood in the mirror, and I looked stupid. So I took it off. You don't have to spend much time with Daryl Davis before he's got your full attention. First, there's his music. He's an amazing boogie woogie and blues piano player who shared the stage with the likes of Chuck Berry and Jerry Lee Lewis. And then there's his provocative work on issues of race. Davis is one of the few African Americans you will ever find attending a KKK rally. More than attending, he is welcome. I got more respect for that black man than I do you white niggers all out right. there. So obviously you're known because you formed all of these friendships with members of the KKK. Mm -hmm. How were you able to do that? Let me say that um, not, not everybody in the Klan is going to become my friend. Mm -hmm. All right, um, There will be people who will go to their grave being hateful, violent, and racist. You know, they're not going to change. But then there are those who, who have that same sentiment, but they take the opportunity to sit down one-on-one -on -one, like you and I are doing. Nice to meet you. My pleasure. I've heard a lot about you for years. When you say the, um, the plight of white America, give me some examples so I would understand, or so our viewers would understand. All the races have different representatives. I felt that the white race didn't have proper leadership for civil rights, so this was something that uh, I felt needed to be addressed. National Socialist Movement travels all over the country on behalf of white citizens, on behalf of white rights. You know, white people should be able to stand up for white issues, just as the other races have, without it being called hate. Would you compare yourself to Martin Luther King? In some ways, in some ways. So which way? He was uh, campaigning for his causes in a peaceful manner, and that's what we're doing. If you spend five minutes, just five minutes, with, with your arch enemy, you will find that you have something in common with him or her. And if you spend 10 minutes, you'll find you have something else in common. And the more you find in common and you build upon what you have in common, the things that you have in contrast, like skin color, begin to matter less and less. What kind of music do you like, uh, Jeff? All kinds of music. Yeah? Rock, hardcore, oi, yeah. RAC, rock against communism. And, and do you realize that rock was invented by, by black musicians? Oh, we're not going to go oh, there. Oh, yes, we are. Oh, yes, we are. <laughs> yes, my brother, we're going there. Well, who, who invented rock then? Elvis Presley. <laughs> You're not being serious, right? Why not? I, I, I know a man is, as intelligent as you are, and trust me, I'm one of the biggest Elvis fans you'll ever meet. But Elvis Presley himself to, would, would say he did not invent rock and roll. You're a musician, so you, you probably uh, know some more things about music than I do as far as going back and, and all that, but I think it's irrelevant. You know, whoever created the music, if music is good, music is good. These conversations are from a new documentary called Accidental Courtesy which focuses on Daryl's methods in combating racism. As an African-American, watching the film left me with more questions than answers. I personally think that, you know, everything, all of the relationships that you fostered and putting yourself in this sort of danger is admirable. But I will say, when I was watching the documentary, I felt like some of the actions went past the point of just forming a relationship. For example, you know, helping a Klansman fix his hood or providing your bus for a Klan rally because they don't have a bus to use. Do you think there's a point where, okay, I'm, I'm kind of crossing the line and maybe helping their cause? No, not at all. Because while I don't support any race, racist agenda or supremacy agenda, whether it's black supremacy or white supremacy or whatnot, I don't support that kind of thing. I do support their right and their freedom uh, of, uh, of speech and their right to express their views. Mm -hmm. That, you know, I'm not afraid of you. I'm not afraid to even support what you believe in, even though I don't believe it. And in doing so, guess what? They reciprocated. And that's how I ended up having their robes and hoods. This is his day job. Wow. What's his day job? Baltimore City Police Officer. Wow. Okay, why did he give me these things? Because, because he no longer believes in what it stood for. Mm -hmm. And yes, there are other people out there just like him, still, in this day and age. But I think this image right here is scary for me. 
Like to yeah. know that this is real. That law enforcement. Could law be enforcement mm -hmm. right up under a clan roof. Mm -hmm. I know it's just cloth, but because the clan is not a thing of the past, just seeing Daryl hold these robes made me feel uneasy. You had a robe. You go inside your bedroom. You probably wouldn't tell anybody. You tried on. I, I, know, would. I know you would. I really would. I know you I would. I really wouldn't. <laughs> I can tell you with certainty I wouldn't. <laughs> One of the more confrontational moments in accidental courtesy happens when Daryl sits down with some members of Baltimore's Black Lives Matter movement. Despite lots of courteous conversations with white supremacists, it's this face to face with young black civil rights activists that gets the most heated. I would just want to know what the end goal is. Is, a, is it to have some type of reconciliation between races? For the layman on the patrol projects, who is it? receiving all the the ills of white supremacy and, and that hate right at on the day-to-day -day level how do they even begin to even think about that conversation that you're engaging in my end goal is to bring people together okay bring bring white supremacists together with with their nemesis how do we learn how to get along with one another this country is well, a why i gotta get along with them pardon me why i gotta get along with them because they are our fellow americans we all have to live in this country together, okay? We, we did. Otherwise, we're going to end up self-destructing. Instead of spending time collecting the history of hate, why not spend that time trying to collect the history that was stolen from us? Later that day, Daryl took me to a concert where he shared the stage with a young piano player named Josh Christina. to say it was a relief to see that he's also got plenty of friends who aren't white supremacists. So you both like the same kind of music. Do you consider it white music, black music? How do you classify it? I call it rock and roll. Yeah. It's whatever kind of music you want. I mean, you had Chuck Berry, you had Little Richard, you had Jerry Lewis, and you had Elvis Presley all playing the same thing. It's rock and roll. There's no color in it. You know, it's just, it's just music. What do you think about that? That's what it's become. It was originated by black artists like Chuck Berry, Little Richard. They put the backbeat in this music. They took elements of country, elements of blues, and boogie woogie and combined it. They created it, but it took the white artists to get it popularized. Do you think it's important to know the history of what you're playing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's why I play, you know, what I do, because I like, I like the music, I like the story. When you think of heavy metal, hard rock, what do you picture? White people. White people, some guy with long blonde hair, black tight spandex pants, yeah. right? Who started that? It wasn't white people, Jimi Hendrix. Music brought me in touch with people in the Klan, because I could tell you earlier how the Klansman got up and came over to approach me because he'd never heard a black guy play piano like that. Music is a common denominator. It brings people together.